Hello, welcome to the uh, second live stream for Smiles from Live. So I'm your host, Kevin McAleer, and uh, today we'll be looking at creating some wheels for Smiles in Fusion 360. So what I have in mind with this is, uh, if we look at one of the original Smiles, I've got one, a couple, more than a couple here to hand. Um, the, 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 the wheels have sort of two different types, don't they? There is a, a slave wheel and there is a master wheel. And the both of them, uh, of, of the same sort of style with the uh, you know six different uh, cutouts on the side and what I was thinking was would it be great if you could have one one part of a wheel say um, looking something like these two parts here and they have a, a cutout area and you can create a, a component that will sort of slot into place like that and that would mean that you could create lots of different designs uh, without having to print out lots of separate wheels you, you could sort of interchange them and they're quite easy to sort of remove and recycle, repurpose. It also means you can have different colour variations and so on. So I've just printed all these in red just as a prototype. So that's what I've got in mind uh, to show you today. So let's crack on in Fusion. So let me uh, get this up and running. So let's, we've got a new file here. The first thing we need to do then is save this. So let's call this one uh, slave wheel okay okay so what we need to do now is just uh, let me just get my notes up here a bit more prepared this time so the first thing I'm going to do before we actually do any sketches is I'm going to create some um, parameters in a table and that means that it's much easier to change these in the future if we decide that the tolerance is not quite right the wheels are either too loose or or too tight or you know the motor doesn't quite fit into the uh, the spindle hole so it's much easier to do if we've um, parameterized this excuse me so the first thing we need to do then is create the wheel diameter so the wheel diameter is 31 and a half millimeters next one is the wheel depth these will all make sense in a in a moment as well as we start to use them so the wheel depth is 21 millimeters um, the next one is so when I was designing the case I had two measurements um, there was case thick and case thin and case thin was the the thinnest part of the case um, if you remember on the cases I've got my calipers to hand um, this part of the case here is three millimeters whereas the front and the back this bit is two millimeters so I had two parameters for that case thick and case thin that's case thin so I use these uh, a lot if um, I reuse the the parameters a lot if that helps the design move along uh, so diamond size is next so diamond is on the on the tops of the wheels you've got these little diamond shapes so that defines the size of them so that's 5.5 millimeters and then the the height so you know if this is a flat surface here how how tall do these get extruded so that's the diamond height and that's two millimeters and next is the wheel stub so the wheel stub flat is one millimeter so let me just find so this this thing here a bit of bad print that one this thing here is the wheel stub so there's quite a few dimensions to that um, the flat bit is this uh, this very top surface here I don't know if you can see that but there's like a, a flat area to it so that's what I mean by wheel stub flat so that's one millimeter then we have wheel stub diameter itself so that is 16 millimeters and then we have the wheel stub depth so that is 10 millimeters this will become clearer again it's, it's, it's to do with the profile that we create to create the wheel stub because we sort of revolve it revolve it round when we're creating it okay nearly done now so wheel stub surround so that 
is four millimeters. And then the last one, which is a general purpose one, is tolerance. So I have this as being 0.2 millimeters. We use that to add or subtract from various measurements to make things fit better. Okay, now that they're created, uh, we can get on with the very first um, sketch. So let's go to the top. Let's create our first sketch. And no surprise, it's going to be a circle. So this is going to be the diameter, the wheel diameter, which as we know is 31 and a half. And what we're going to do is do an off offset. So if we select that, press O, and then we want to change the direction of that. So we can flip it. And we want that to be two millimeters um, inside the original one. There we go. I'll also make that a construction line as well. Okay. So what we're going to do now is just finish that sketch. Let's have a look at that in 3D, and then we're going to extrude that. I did that on the top, didn't I? I didn't really want to do it on the top, never mind, it doesn't matter. So now let's extrude that up from the origin by the wheel depth. So they are very chunky, these Smiles wheels, if you if you think about you know, from a proportion point of view, and that's because the, it's the Caterpillar tracks that are designed to sort of fit on the top of them. So that's why they're so chunky. But it's part of the aesthetic, isn't it, of the uh, SMARS. Okay, so that's uh, extruded. So now we're going to do something interesting. We're going to create the um, all these different faces that are on there. It's actually an octagon if you've ever sat down and counted them. So what we'll do, we'll pick this face here. We'll create a sketch. And what we'll do is we'll project in that line there. So P for project. Let's select that line. So it makes it easy for snapping things too. Let's create the uh, circle, snap it to there. And then what we will now, now do, uh, I only found this command this afternoon, we'll do an inscribed polygon. So we click on there and then we'll just hit eight while we're in there. Oops. Eight sides to it, there we go. I actually didn't want that to be eight in size. We can change that. Let's do that again. Let's just undo that. So create polygon, inscribe polygon. Click on our origin to the outside wall. But before I let, oh, I do click on that, do I? No, I don't. <laughs> Let's do that one more time. I was watching a YouTube video of somebody um, tutoring how to use Fusion 360 called Taylor and he had a count of how many times he made mistakes. I think I need something similar. Right, there we go. So I've just pressed tab to go between the two fields. Now, it doesn't matter if these are um, not horizontal. In fact, let's purposely make them not horizontal. We can see that they're blue, meaning that they're um, not fully constrained. So if we click on that, that's looking much better now. So that. I will dimension that as well, just to make sure. Oh, good. Let's do that as the wheel diameter. Cool. Okay. So there we have our polygon. Um, I will also do uh, a center area. This is going to be our wheel stub. So I think it's that. That there. Okay. So that's that sketch done. So next up. So someone's asking in the chat there, can I share the parameters window, please? Absolutely, yes. What I will do, at the end, I'll, I'll post up, um, I've made quite a few notes on this, and what I'll do is I'll create another page like I did on the, uh, the Smiles Fan website, uh, how to create your own chassis. Well, this one I'll do on how to create your own wheels, and I'll have all these um, these measurements here. So um, don't worry if, I, if it seems I've, I've rushed over these. We will go over them as well. Okay. Now oh, that's interesting. When I click... When I click the parameters window, you can't actually see that. Okay. Yeah, don't worry about that. I will, I will share that out um, at the end of the show. Okay, so what I need to do now is create the um, the cutout. I need to extrude the octagon, get rid of these parts here. So what we'll do, let me just orient that so that we can see it. 
What I might do is I might change the orientation of this and then just reset the home. So we want it to be, I do that top there and they set that. So you can reset the particular faces being the front or the top. So if I do the front, make that the top, that'll make more sense. Right, so I just uh, right click on that, set current view as top. Okay, so what I want to do now is uh, Q to push and pull. So what I want to do, just rotate this round a bit. I want to be able to cut that all the way through. So distance is all. And I want to select more than just that one part there. I want to do all of these different parts. So I can just click on these. You don't have to hold anything down to do this. You just uh, select them. There we go. So that's now gonna cut away so we've just got uh, the hexagon, uh, octagon shape. Okay. So what we need to do now is the uh, that hole in the center, we need to knock that out as well. So we know it's on that sketch there, which is that second sketch. So let's, let's name that one that's um, octagon. That first one is just the, uh, call it the base. Okay, so if we, if we show that one, it means it's a lot easier for us to do Q. We can cut distance all so that we've now got, we might have to do that again in a minute, but um, that's fine. So what I will also do, so that hole actually, we just set that um, in our sketch there as just being 16, which is the, the diameter of the get that mark back out again the diameter of this stub here so one of the things that we need to think about there is the tolerance between that if that's exactly the size of the uh, the stub it, it, it'll not fit in very well it'll be too tight and you'll end up sort of just shredding your fingers which I did recently so what we need to do is just adjust that slightly so if I go into uh, there so instead of it just being wheel diameter it's going to be wheel diameter minus the the stub flat and then plus the tolerance so don't worry about that I'll, I'll make sure I share these uh, formulas you can see it's got a formula because it's got the FX there uh, that will just give us a little bit more play so because these are parameterized it's now just re cut that hole through the center which is good so next up then is uh, the rim area so Let's try extruding this. So we want to, it's really that hole. What we can do is just hide the body temporarily. Let's get that whole thing selected. Okay, and then switch the body back on. And what we want to do is just do that by one millimeter. Um, so that flat is one millimeter, so we can use that. I just need to make sure it's going in the right direction. So let's just look there and it needs to be the minus direction, but still be a join. There we go. So that's going to give us, if you've ever looked at these wheels, um, they have a very slight protruding rim on them. So we need to add to that now. Uh, uh, fillet. So let's do a fillet. So we need to just select that and I'm going to do about half a millimeter ideally it should be a full millimeter but um, fusion was messing up when I was experimenting with this before so let's just make sure we've got these selected I might turn off that sketch so I can see it better so you do have to hold down a uh, command on a Mac um, control on a PC I think okay let's just turn that around do the rest of them. Okay. That last one underneath. Okay. So that's one side done. Let's 
you now can see if we look at that sort of straight on that's where the caterpillar tracks are going to sit on the top and we're sort of looking at it straight on there so what we need to do is mirror that across the other side rather than recreating the whole thing so to do that we need a, a plane going right through the middle of this uh, area here so what we need to do there is construction mid plane and flip this round to the other side boom there we go we've got a nice mid plane right through the middle save just to make sure we've got our work saved right and now what we can do is select the features that we want to mirror across so it's the last two that we did doesn't matter it's got that middle bit there so we've got to create we've got to mirror I've already selected those two features from the timeline at the bottom and we are doing it by the pattern type as feature the mirror plane is the one we just created and okay we can actually turn off that construction line now. So there we go, we've got both of them created. So let's look what's next. So we've still got our center cut out, which is good. Right, so what we need to do now is create the diamond shape on the top. So we're going to go to this one here. I prefer it to be this way around. It's a bit easier to see. So first of all, we're going to do P for project. Just get that nice outline. So we can quite easily create that. Okay, and we're just going to create L and X for our construction line. We're just going to do some diagonal lines here to find the nice center point. We're going to go from that point there to that point there, and then the same from the middle point. Okay, so now let's create some more lines. So Let's go for. Doesn't have to be perfect when we create this because we're going to dimension it out. Okay. So now D for dimension, that's going to be the diamond size, which is five and a half. Doesn't matter that it's crazy at the moment. Again, that's the diamond size. We can either type it in or we can click on the other dimension to copy it. We can make these parallel and equal. So let's try that. And then let's make these equal. Make them equal. Let's make that. Complaining that that's over constrained. I might just have to delete one of these lines and just do that again. Let's try that. Okay, so that needs to be coincident to that line there. And we just need one more line back in there from there to there. And then I'm just going to select these and just hit X to make them so they're not construction lines. Okay, perfect. That's looking good. So we've finished that sketch now. Let's look at that in 3D. What we need to do now, oops, I really did mess that up, didn't I? Changing the orientation. Okay, so what we need to do now is just extrude it up. Q to push pull. And the height is the diamond height we set before, which is two millimeters. There we go. Let's zoom in on that bit. And we just need to add a chamfer to the edges so that one that one that one that one we're going to go for 1.5 for the chamfer i've experimented with a few different sizes and that one i think is the most pleasing and works the well grips the uh, caterpillar tracks okay so what we need to do now with that is a circular pattern so let's go to create pattern circular pattern we're going to go off features now we want to just select the last two things we did which was the extrude and the chamfer the axis is going to be straight through the middle there so let's make sure we've got our orange and turned on so the axis is actually we can just do that that's fine and then we want eight of them oops there we go boom there we go Look at that. Okay, let's have a look if there's 
anything else. Circular pattern, right, so let's look at our, our wheel now. So what I want to now do, now that we've got it to this kind of state, I want to create more of that state actually. Push that out the middle. So this is what we've kind of got so far. So I want to create this inner cutout section here. And then what I also want to do um, inside there, there's a there's a slight indentation in the middle. Uh, and that's where when you push it through the wheel uh, stub, it, that edge there will catch onto that edge there and sort of lock it into place. So before we do that, let's do this um, sketch on the outside surface, which is going to be what we call our wheel inner. So let's get some projected lines in there as well. So let's have that one, P for project, that line, that line. Okay. So what I want to do is do a circle from the middle to the outside edge. Then we want to have, just looking at my reference diagram there, um, the offset that we did before in the very first sketch, our base one, we want that as well. So let's project that in. Oops. And what we want to do is create some lines as well from the center, just to help alignment. L and then X to make it a construction line from the center point. Straight up, straight down. And we can also do one straight across the middle. Okay. So what we need to do now then is create some little squares. So what this is to do with, if I just get that middle section, if you see on the edge there, there is a small line, a small sort of area that will locate inside into these four areas. And that just helps lock it into position. So when you, when you get it there, it helps it sort of position. You can just see them how they slide into place there. So that's what we're going to just create now. This like just a square area. So let's go to center rectangle from that very middle point there. And let's bring that out. And these are all one millimeter, so we can use our dimension of the flat. And that one's flat. Okay, and we can also make that so it's uh, not construction line. I'll do those two sides there because we want this one to cut into it. The bottom one, I'm not so bothered about. Let's do the same over here. So now that we've got that there, actually, we can mirror that round. Not mirror. We can do a circular pattern round four times. So let's do that. A circular pattern. We've selected the objects. The center point is that point there, and we want four of them. Let's click OK. I didn't quite get that right, but it's a small thing to fix now. Just need to get that line joined up there. Wait for it to think about that a second. There we go. And then that line there. And then the one at the bottom as well. OK. That's that sketch done. We can finish that when it's finished thinking about it. And then we do Q for push pull. Um, what I'll do is I'll switch off those other sketches just so it doesn't doesn't get confused. So yeah, we want to have that middle area and that top, that bottom, side and side. There we go. And then what we want to do is extrude it back so it cuts into the body and it's half the depth of the wheel. So if we use the wheel depth, oops, wheel depth, divide by two. There we go. So a 
don't think it caught the bottom one there so let's just go back there and select that bottom profile there we go that's looking good let's just turn our origin off so we can see it better there we go that's looking pretty much like the uh, the design there now so the only bit we're missing now is this this inner cutout area so let's go for that so to do that we need to uh, we need to create a, a, a profile plane that we can write a sketch on and then we want to create that stub profile that we created in the last video um, which is a kind of side on profile of this and then rotate it round we want to rotate it round and cut it out to gouge out that shape so what we'll do first um, we'll switch our origin back on because that actually has a that's right in the middle of the, uh, of the object already the body so if we use that one there create a sketch on that one there orientation and if we use the slice option um, we can look straight through the object so if I just show you in 3d it's like it's sliced right through it so that we can see exactly what we're looking at so, so what we want to do then is we want to create this sketch so I'm going to turn off the body just so it doesn't distract us and then we can then line it up so what this thing looks like if you remember it's like this kind of shape so let's just start dimensioning this and making it correct okay so D for dimension so these small areas at the top they're all one millimeter which is our stub flat This is the original reason I called it the stub flat because there's so many flat areas on it. They're all the same dimension. It just made sense to uh, make them all the same. Okay, so the angle of that between that and that is 135, which is perfect. And that bottom area is the one which is 10, which is the stub wheel depth, I think. Yep, 10. That is the one which is four millimeters, which I think is the stub wheel uh, surround. And what else are we missing on there? I think that is it. So what I usually do as well is I'll create from the origin just a horizontal line out. Let's just make that uh, X for construction line. And then let's dimension from the very top of that to the middle of there. That should be half of the diameter, that should be the radius. So that's going to be the stub diameter divided by 2, which is 8. That's correct. Right, so we switch the body back on now. We just need to align this edge with this edge here. So if we just click on that P to project that edge out there. And then let's just do a collinear constraint on that edge and that edge there. Right, so you can see now that's going to cut into that as we revolve it round. Now what we actually want is a little bit more. We, we don't just want that. We can actually get rid of all this area here as well. So I'm just going to go back in there and just add in a, an extra rectangle. And we also want it to eat out this area here as well. So let's just switch up the body for a second. Add in an extra rectangle. We'll do it from that point there, like that. It doesn't really matter how long it is, we can stick with four. We just need a line from there to there, and then we can make these lines construction lines. So I'll hit X to make them construction. That's fine. It's still blue for some reason, that, but that's because of the height. So if we just make that so that is collinear with that there we go nice and constrained right to finish the sketch and what we want to do then is rotate this round inside this body and then use it as a tool to cut out that area so if we now go to uh, revolve we want to select that profile there which we've got the axis is that axis there we don't want, we do want to do a cut and the object to cut is just the main body so that should do the trick so 
There we go, well, that looks pretty much like our actual model there. There we go, so what's next? So just to make sure that we're happy with that, what I'm going to do is a section analysis. And it's a bit like before when we did the slice, when we were creating the sketch on the inside of the, the surface. So if we go to um, inspect section analysis and we select a face, I can select that mid plane again um, and then just click OK. And then what we can see there is just midway through the, the design, what it looks like. So it looks very thin there, but it's actually only two millimeters thick that thin part there if you look it's just where the, uh, the cutout goes so that's fine that's not going to cause us any problems okay so so that is the slave wheel complete and so if we save that and we create a new design we can now create the master wheel so if you remember the difference between the slave wheel and the master wheel if I just uh, get these two here the slave wheel has the, the hole that's very large and the master wheel has the very thin hole which is for the, um, the motor to sort of uh, push in on. So it'll all align to that flat section of the uh, spindle and lock into place. And that's the only difference between the slave wheel and the master wheel. So we can actually use the slave wheel um, and derive from that the master wheel. So if we just save this as master wheel Okay, and then open up our data window and what we can then do is do insert derive. We can select our slave wheel from that window and in it comes. So what we'll do is I'll just go back to the slave wheel and I'll switch off that section analysis because that's not really needed. Okay, and what we want is the, the body. So, so what this is looking for, this derive window that you can't see, that's frustrating. Um, there's a window that's saying derive and it's just asking me which objects I want to select and I'm just going in there and selecting the, the body. Uh, so I'm just gonna click okay on that. So now I've got um, a derived um, body and what I want to do is basically just fill in that hole on the back. So if we just create a sketch on there, and the sketch is very simple, so it's just going to be a circle. So the the diameter of one of the motors, that motor spindle, is exactly three millimeters. So if we if we do our dimension that as being uh, three millimeters. Uh, plus our tolerance which because this is a new sketch we haven't got that in there so let's just type it in but then go and add in our parameter for that so the parameter is going to be called spindle and it's three millimeters and our tolerance was 0.2 so let's go back to that and we want to say so it's the spindle plus the tolerance there we go and then the if the cross section of the spindle um, is essentially just like a cut through a line cutting through the top of it so what we'll do is we'll create two lines one at the top and one at the bottom and the distance between them is 2.47 so let's just make this bottom line tangent to the bottom of the, the wheel so tangent to the bottom of the wheel there we go and then the distance between that and that is 2.47 okay what we can now do is just align them with the wheel there we go okay that is it so actually what we'll do we'll just go back in there and we'll just add another um, 
we just add in another projected circle. What I really want is the one from the inside, which is just a bit thicker. So what we can actually do, we can just cheat. We can just create that to be just large enough to, to fill the hole. Okay, so let's go to Q to push pull. And we want to push everything, including that little bit there, into the body. And let's just flip it around so we can see what it looks like on the other side. Because we're going to push it through to an object, which is that inner face. And we're going to do a join. Okay, so now what we've got is a master wheel. That's how quick and easy it is to create the master wheel. So let's save that. Okay, so next we will create the inner, which is the that new bit that pushes in. We can create one of those now. And there's lots of different designs that we can create for that. I'll just do a very simple one just for time so that we're not on here all night. So let's create a new design. Okay, now we're doing in the feed, looking good. Right, so let's save this as wheel inner. And let's, let's derive a design. So if we go to insert derive, we go to our slave wheel and we select the sketch that we created. Oh, we just need to save that design first, the slave design, because we changed it. Right, so what we want to do, it was, it was the sketch that was called sketch four. So let's just rename that sketch. Let's call it the inner profile. Inner. let's just do that again insert derive slave wheel we're going to select that sketch and bring it into this new design so sketches we just want that sketch we don't want the body just the inner profile sketch okay so what that's going to do is bring across into our new design it's just saying it's out of date because I saved it. So let's just click on that little thing there to update it. And then if we look at that, there we go. That's what the inner profile looks like. So what we need to do now then is just do a push pull on that. And let's do it. Let's just get it so it's in 3D so we can see it. And we're going to do it by it's the wheel depth, which if I go back to that table of measurements. So the depth of the wheel is 21, so it's half of 21. So it's going to be 10 and a half deep. And let's just make sure we extrude back all the different parts of the profile that we need. Bit and that bit, there we go. So that's the pretty much the, the basis of what we need. So let's create a new design on the front of there and let's do like a, a three spoke design. So if we go back up to there, let's create uh, an inscribed polygon. Click on there and yep, yeah, that's looking good. Let's make that horizontal not vertical there we go and what else do we want to do on there let's go back to our notes so let's create some lines in here from each corner to each corner and we'll do one end to end as well 
so we can make that one. Make that a construction line, that's fine. Right, so what we want to do now is push them back in. When we did our extrude before, we could have included the middle actually. So what I might do is go back, finish that sketch, go back to our extrude and just update the profile to include the middle as well. There we go. So now with this sketch selected, we want to cut out some of the areas and leave all the areas intact. So we want to basically push and pull these through. So let's do that to all. Let's push that through the body to the distance of all, cutting it out so that we've now got this sort of a design. And what we'll do to make this a bit more interesting, because that looks quite severe, that is we just need one of these surfaces here to create a sketch on. And what I'll do, I'll just try and map out a little profile that we can use to, to cut out that design. So if we have, um, just need to pick a, an area, let's use the origin to this area. So what we're going to do is create a little profile on here switch off the body for a second so let's sketch this out so we're going to come down some amount we're going to go across an amount and then we are going to go up some amount and then back down again so it's kind of like a wedge shape so let's have a look at our body there so i just need to project in that edge um, let's just have a look and see yeah i think we need to add another inner circle on there just to give us a, a rim so let's just pause that for a second let's go back to our sketch there let's just do another inner circle so actually we can just do it from the outside circle let's do a, an offset by two millimeters two will be enough Maybe one. Maybe one. That looks okay. Let's do that. Okay. So now, when we did our extrude, that one's okay as an extrude. It was the next one, wasn't it, where we pushed and pulled through? What I want to do is just. I might redo that sketch. I'm not happy with that. Let's do let's delete that sketch and do that again. Let's delete that push pull. Let's delete that sketch and do that again. Right. So we need a circle going to that outer edge there. We need to offset that by one millimeter inwards. Just flip that. There we go. Now let's do our inscribed polygon from the center. There we go. And then let's just add some lines to that as well. Each point to each point. Okay. And then let's just make sure that's dimensioned. Okay, right, that's looking much better. Now let's do a push pull. So what we want to do them areas there. Let's push them through the body. So all is the distance, cutting it, that's much better. Right, now we can do that sketch on the inner face. So we just want to pull in it's that line there I was looking for, which is the one that she's a millimeter in from the offset. So let's P for project. Let's have that line. Let's have the outer edge. Okay. Perfect. Right. Let's just do our, our, our cutting out tool profile. So it's going to be like that. Move that right back actually. Oh, wait a minute. 
so that right that point there needs to come a lot further back like that so this area here will be like the inner hub area of the wheel and then this will be the sort of um, well you'll see once we once we do this so that actually will go all the way up to there let's turn the body off again let's just do another line instead that one there to there select that one let's get rid of that line there okay and then that one okay right so now what we want to do is revolve that round on the axis of that axis there we want to cut it out of the main body and then now when we look at our wheel we've now got this nice design and if we don't like you know if we want that to be more flat we can just go into our sketch and just edit that so we can just make that point there a bit longer so maybe we should dimension these so we can look what we want to see so that's five millimeters so it'd be 10 when it's finished in the center yeah that looks okay and if we wanted to we could add extra flourishes to this we could chamfer it we could create all kinds of twists so if you look at that design there they've got kind of a fan design um, and that was just um, adding um, chamfers or fillets to each of these uh, but on this one i'm just going to leave it and the, the back of it we can just leave as it is nobody's going to see that so now now that we've done that wheel let's try and assemble it all together and see what it looks like so let's create a new design and we're going to bring two of these things together um, and what we will also do is just add some color to it so let's go back to our slave wheel let's get rid of the sketches and let us add an appearance so if i press get rid of the origin if i press a to get the appearance window up i'm going to search in here for um, um, white plastic so plastic white and there's an abs white i'm just going to throw that onto the model okay so let's just save that okay and then for the inner wheel let's make that a different color just to contrast it so a for appearance and we'll do i don't know red plastic We'll do a matte color just throw that on there and save that out okay i'm back to on our design there let's save this as we'll call it assembly how are we doing on the stream oh good right so what we'll do first of all is get our slave wheel we'll right click and insert into current design that's fine and then let's get our inner wheel insert into current design and because they're not quite the way that I want them to be what I'm going to do is just pull this out a bit and maybe rotate it a little bit so that we can see the different surfaces we're going to make a joint um, so what we need to do is look at the area we want to create the joints in so that area there we click on the joint command and we just need to select the, the snap area which is that you get this little sort of half circle moon thing and then we just need to do the same again on the second one and then let's just flip that and i think that is what we are after look at that there we go so that's pretty much what we were looking for we've now got a slave and a master we can create as many of these different designed inner sections as we like using our creativity um, and we can make as many variations as we like different colors different designs um, different purposes different connectors create ones with lego connectors on we can do all kinds of stuff on there um, and we know that these will work with the um, 
the Caterpillar tracks as well that use the same measurements from that. So, is there anything else we need to cover off on this session actually? Let's just have a see if there's anything else. I think that is everything I wanted to cover off. Yes. So there we go. So we can go to our render function and we can just have a quick look what that looks like. It's the same, we've not got the latest version of that, so we just click on that and it'll update everything. And uh, there we go. There's the wheel. And if we wanted to see how that looks with the uh, the master wheel instead, we could just bring in the master wheel as well, because they're both on the same because they're both on the same origin. Of course, they're not. Uh, we can just move that into place. That's not a problem. And we can just maneuver that into position do a better job with it if, if I have more time but you get the idea we can just switch off the slave wheel and just eyeball what that looks like now so of course we didn't apply a, a, an appearance to the master wheel so let's just do that let's make that a different color so A for appearance and let's go for plastic and let's throw in there's a grey plastic there let's use that Okay, save that, okay, go back to our assembly, get the latest, there we go. So we can toggle between the, the uh, slave and the master, and obviously all, the only difference is really on that back area where you've got either the, the hole or the, the larger hole. Cool. Great, so what we'll look at um, in the next stream, um, I'll look to do this uh, maybe on Sunday evening, will be um, maybe the range holder, creating that and creating these uh, little standoffs, range holder cover, and range holder holder. And we'll also have a look at the uh, the original chassis design that we did uh, the other day. There's a few things on that that we uh, we need to just go and fix up. Um, so there's an area on the back of these that we didn't add. So there's just like a little area on the back of the uh, where the stub fits into the chassis. And on the one that we did the other day, we didn't model that. We also didn't model the cutout on the back of the other one. And I think we forgot to mirror these across as well. So just a few things to go back over as well just to improve that uh, and then we can also then look at um, some other options as well like um, some other designs that we can create so I, I mold up a, a little trailer that can hook on the back so what, I, what I've not modelled up on there is the uh, is the, the area that that sort of hooks into so that they can move around and one of the things I did try out was uh, you know battery cover so this one I did actually print out. There we go. So you can get the battery out of there. So that's one of the things that I have tried. And that sort of slots into the place there. It covers it back up. Um, looking at a different variant where it sort of pivots. So I might try printing that one out this weekend and see how that goes. Uh, and you can see next to me here I've got loads of different smiles. There's two there, there's another two here various different states of uh, being built. That one's lost a wheel as well. And we've got loads of different parts and chassis and prototypes that I've been working on. So this was the first one that I did where I modelled the whole thing myself in Fusion 360 and just added a um, few different flourish designs myself. This one hasn't got the, uh, you know, the stubs on the, on the side where the second version has. Uh, because I created that stub design, it meant that I could then use it on things like the uh, the trailer. So, so some of these are some of the original wheels um, from the original STLs from the Smars um, design, and you can see they just they just fit right on. If you find that these are stiff or or feel quite uh, there's a bit of friction, you can put some um, silica grease on there, and that'll make them much more slick. I've got some in a drawer at the bottom there, I should have got out before, but 
Uh, yeah, lots of different things that we can do now that we've got the, the model in Fusion 360. And using that derive command, we can then pull out various um, parts of the design that we've already created and reuse them, which means that we don't have to then waste time um, going over things we've already designed. And instead, it means that we can uh, focus on the creativity and the new things that we want to create. So all the different new designs that we can we can look at. So I'm very interested in wheels and you know what we can do with that. Um, very interested to create, um, which I've designed but not printed yet, a TPU, a sort of rubberized um, wheel tire that can go over the top of this. So it utilizes the uh, um, the diamond sort of shapes on there. So we don't we can still use these wheels. We don't need to reprint an entirely new wheel. And I was also thinking about a different variant, so ones that don't have these um, diamond studs on, because they, they do slip on smooth surfaces. Maybe we have one that's got some, a different texture to it, so it's much more designed for indoor use rather than use with the Caterpillar tracks, just as a different variant. So that's one of the things um, I was going to look at next. So if there's anything uh, else you'd like me to look at or talk about, please uh, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Uh, please subscribe and like to the, the, the channel. Uh, and obviously your feedback will help drive uh, what we do next. Uh, please visit the SmartsFan website as well. We've got smartsfan.com where I've got all the instructions. I'll put these uh, dimensions on there as well so people can go in there and uh, continue their own uh, designs in Fusion or SolidWorks, whatever you prefer to use. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching the channel. Um, We'll see you all very soon. Thanks, everyone.